So welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories read here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com or our television site at IndianCountryTV.com. Here are the news stories from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. One of two men charged with killing a fellow American Indian Movement member more than 33 years ago has renewed his request for a separate trial, saying a jurisdictional issue for his co-defendant should not delay his case. Richard Marshall and John Graham pled not guilty to charges they committed or aided and abetted the December 1975 murder of Anime Pictuakwash on the Pine Ridge Reservation. Prosecutors believe Marshall, who is asking for his own trial, gave a 32 caliber revolver and shells to Graham and fellow AIM members Arlo Looking Cloud and Theta Clark, who stopped by Marshall's home with Aquash hours before Graham shot her. After several delays, Graham and Marshall were last scheduled to be tried in May. But a week before the trial, U.S. District Judge Lawrence Pearsall dismissed an aiding and abetting charge against Graham because neither he nor Aquash belonged to a U.S. federally recognized tribe, which is required for the U.S. to have jurisdiction. Both are from Canadian tribes. Prosecutors appealed to the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, and the trial is now on hold. Two men are accused of dealing drugs on the Turtle Mountain Reservation of North Dakota and using some of the profits to buy racehorses. A federal indictment charges Lloyd Joseph Counts Jr. and Lloyd, Lloyd Joseph Counts III with conspiracy to distribute a controlled substance and with money laundering. Prosecutors are asking the men to repay $2 million, which allegedly represents profits in the drug conspiracy. Authorities say some of the drug money was used to buy quarter horses that raced at tracks in Fargo, Shakopee, Minnesota, and Fort Pierce, South Dakota. The government is asking the defendants to turn over 15 horses. The College of St. Scholastica in Duluth, Minnesota, has received a new four-year grant from the U.S. Department of Education to support its Ojibwe language and culture education program. Only 11 such grants were awarded nationally in the year 2009. The $1.28 million grant is administered by the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Indian Education. It will support 12 American Indian students who are interested in teaching and working in the American Indian community. Students will major in elementary or secondary education and in Ojibwe language and culture education. The grant will provide students with tuition support as well as monthly living stipends. Applications for participants in the project are being accepted now for fall 2009 enrollment. The project is open to undergraduate students with previous post-secondary education. Students will earn their bachelor's degree and receive teaching license within three years. To apply for enrollment under the new grant or for more information about the OLCE program, contact Valerie Tanner at 218-723-6014. The three affiliated tribes are building a road for the new $20 million health center plan for the Fort Berthold Reservation. Officials have closed off bids for a contractor to build the Elbow Woods Memorial Health Center, which is, open, uh, which is due to open in late 2011. The contract will be awarded later. Congress earlier this year approved $17 million for the project. The health center will be built on 120 acres that the tribe owns north of Fort Berthold Community College in Newtown, South, uh, Newtown, North Dakota. A walking path will connect the two. The Army Corps of Engineers will build the health center and then turn it over to the Indian Health Service. The name of the new center is from the community of Elbow Woods, which had a hospital with the same name. Elbow Woods was flooded when Garrison Dam was built. John Rocky Bar Barrett, Citizen Band Potawatomi Chairman, announced that uh, Russell Swimmer has joined the Board of Directors of the First National Bank and Trust Company, the United States' largest tribally owned national bank, the former Special Trustee for American Indian Trust, Assistant Secretary of the Interior for Indian Affairs, and Cherokee National Nation Principal Chief brings decades of experience and pertinent knowledge of government and financial affairs at the highest levels to the position. Mr. Swimmer pronounced himself pleased to become affiliated with the bank with First Nations sound reputation and conservative banking principles, according to Swimmer. 
Recently, Mr. Swimmer left his six-year position as special trustee in office created by Congress in 1994 to facilitate reform of the American Indian Trust. The trust assets today consist of 54 million acres of land, $3.4 billion under management, approximately 20% of Americans' energy resources, and several million acres of timber. Navajo Nation lawmakers voted last week to table a measure to repeal a set of laws based on the tribe's centuries-old traditional values and customs. The Diné fundamental laws were codified in the year 2002 over concerns that the knowledge of them were fading among the youth. The largely undefined laws have guided the upbringing of many Navajos and served as the basis of their way of life, which promotes balance and harmony. Delegate Raymond Joe, who contends the laws have been abused and misinterpreted, moved to strike them from the tribal code, though some saw his move as political. Navajos were Navajos before this legislation, this law which was adopted, he told delegates during the last day of their summer session in Window Rock. Navajos are going to continue to be Navajos regardless of whether we amend it or repeal it. Less than a handful of the Council's 88 members spoke up on the matter, mostly in Navajo, before lawmakers voted 48 to 21 to table it so that a work session could be held. A grassroots group on the Leech Lake Reservation of northern Minnesota is mounting a petition campaign against a proposed oil pipeline across northern Minnesota. The Leech Lake Tribal Council approved a deal with Enbridge Energy to allow the pipeline to run across the reservation earlier this year, but some tribal members have presented petitions asking the council to cancel the deal or to put it on a referendum vote for members of the tribe. Marty Copenace, a spokesman for the Indigenous Environmental Network, says people are worried about possible leaks from the pipeline. The line would parallel an existing pipeline, already controversial, which brings crude oil from Canada's tar sands to a refinery in Superior, Wisconsin. Enbridge says the line is being built to respond to demand for more crude oil. An Enbridge spokesman says the company expects to start construction on the pipeline within a couple of weeks. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank our underwriters for helping with this broadcast. Take a peek at our offerings in the next few days as some members of our production team are up on the Bad River Reservation for Mean Wanjamo, the 25-year celebration of the Great Lakes Indian Fish and Wildlife Commission's Treaty Cove management history. And those should start showing up in YouTube and the live stream station and our digital players here in the next 48 hours. Thank you for stopping in and stopping again. You have a great day.